Hi everybody, welcome back to SE Aviation. Today we'll be taking a look at how to do an ILS approach with the Cirrus SF50, the Vision Jet, in X-Plane Mobile. Enjoy! So, we are here in the airplane, we are approaching to Tallahassee International Airport, 5,000 feet. And as you can see, I have just enabled VPATH, which is taking the airplane down a vertical path programmed by the Garmin 1000. We're also flying on GPS right now at about 230 knots, and we are descending to 1,600 feet, which is the altitude at which we're gonna intercept the ILS glide slope. So here I've just made a mistake, but I'm back to GPS and we keep our descent while also notice how we are slowing down that is very important so here is there's b path again and as you can see we are on alt s that stands for alt uh, selected altitude and it's not armed yet the active part is b path the inactive part is alt s that means then when we get to the selected altitude, in this case 1,600 feet, the selector will automatically change to Altes, and so we won't be descending anymore, but the airplane will start maintaining 1,600 feet. So heading 302, we're waiting to intercept the localizer for runway 36 at Tallahassee when we get to the Vans waypoint. And as you can see on the top of the simulator, there is four nautical miles until Vans. And there is the airport. It is very nice to fly at night with this airplane. Good, so the 1600 has turned blue. That means that we're getting close, exactly 1000 feet above it. And it will keep blue until we get to it. We're getting close. There you can see in the map, so we'll make a right turn and align with the localizer for the runway. There we go, 2,000 feet above ground. Actually, that's the barometric altitude, it's not above ground level. But this is altitude. barely, it's, I mean, it's mostly sea level, so it's almost the same. There you can see we have altitude selected and we're keeping 1,600 feet and we will keep that altitude until we intercept the glide slope for runway 36. Remember this is an ILS approach and an ILS approach has two dimensions, the vertical dimension and the horizontal dimension. The horizontal dimension is controlled by the localizer which we have just armed and the glide slope dimension is controlled, uh, sorry, the uh, vertical dimension is controlled by the glide slope. So in the Garmin 1000, which is the equipment that this airplane has, the localizer mode is automatically selected once the airplane detects that the next waypoint is the final approach fix. So the final approach, uh, approach fix, as it speaks by itself, is the final fix of the, of the approach where you must change from lateral navigation to basically ILS navigation. When the airplane detects that, it automatically goes to localizer mode. And you can notice that it changed to localizer mode because below the, the artificial horizon, you can see it says lock one and it is green. If we were still on GPS mode or LNAV, it would be on magenta. Now I've just accelerated a little bit to so that we just go a little bit faster and I do not bore you flying slow but we should actually keep slow speed since we're getting close to the airport we don't want to gain energy we want to start losing energy there we go we have also an alert right there it, it is uh, indicating that we are getting close to airspace, controlled airspace. This is a simulator. 
So that doesn't really matter, but it's basically telling us, hey, you're getting close to control airspace, or maybe just some type of interesting airspace you have to be careful about. In this case, this, I guess, is Delta airspace or Charlie airspace. And here we go, heading 005, the runway is ahead. If we want it, we could just change to a visual approach at this point, but we're keeping the ILS approach for now. I have not tuned the communications radio to Tallahassee Tower or Tallahassee Ground, because as I said, we are not flying uncontrolled. We're not flying with ATC, with simulated ATC but you can do that if you want. You can search for the frequencies uh, in the internet or at navigraph.com and tune in the frequencies if you would like to. Now, you can see the glide slope diamond starting to go down right there, that green diamond, it's starting to go down because that means we're getting closer to intercepting the glide slope. So that's why I have uh, lowered the landing gear and there you go, glide slope capture. So you can see we're now flying on LOC, APP, YD, and GS. That means localizer as our lateral guidance. Now in the middle we have autopilot and yaw damper. And as vertical guidance we have GS which stands for glide slope. Now we are setting the airplane for a possible missed approach. That's why I said 4000 in the altitude uh, selector. In case we have to go around, we will already know what altitude to aim to. In this case, the chart says it has to be 4,000 and we are slowing down, losing a little bit of energy. A good practice is to be completely stabilized at 1,000 feet above ground level. So we're doing it a little bit the wrong way here because we're not completely stabilized yet. But we are on a slow airplane, so we will have time to get stable in the next few seconds. If we were landing on a 747, for example, if at 1,000 feet you're not stable, you have to go around immediately. And most airlines use that procedure, even if it's not a 747. There you go. As we lower the flaps, the wings gain more lift, so the airplane wants to pitch up. That's why the autopilot has to counteract by trimming down. But here everything looks fine. At any point I will disconnect the autopilot. We have all our external lights on, landing light, strobe light, taxi light. And here we go, everything looks fine. And disarm the autopilot. Now let's go ahead and try to make a good landing. We are too low right here. You can see four red lights. Those are the puppy lights, precision approach path indicator lights. We're a little bit low. And here we go. Touchdown right here. Good. X plane has a big problem, which is that you cannot partially brake. Either you step on the brakes or you don't brake. That sucks. But, well, we have no other choice. If I don't brake, I will miss the taxiway. So vacating via Alpha 5, we are going to the general aviation ramp right here. I'm taxiing a little bit fast, sorry for that. That's not very realistic. We should taxi slower because we could damage our landing gear. And we're gonna park right there in the middle of the hangar. I'm just cleaning up the avionics a little bit right here. 
to gain some time. And let's get to the hangar right there. I've also turned off landing and strobe lights because those lights at ground level will basically make blind anybody who sees them. And let's stop right here. This is a great spot. It looks fine. Oh, Coca-Cola machine. Wow. And uh, shut down the engine. We're cleaning up the flight plan we used for the flight. I just showed you guys the approach, but this was a whole flight from Miami to Tallahassee. Basically imitating American 3451, which is the real flight that does this route. And the transponder goes to standby. We clean up the nearest airports uh, tab and bearing two, bearing one, then clean the inset and uh, that's basically it. Turn off the heaters, window heat, pitot heat, navigation lights, we keep those on but they will turn off as soon as we disconnect the battery and the air, condition air conditioning fan goes off, open the door. And that's all. That is how you fly an ILS and get a serious down in the ground. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.